was lovely, Patty. I can't wait to see what we're going to be singing today in praise and worship. How awesome. And we're so grateful that you're joining us on Facebook. And we just want to go ahead and usher the Lord in. So if you will, get still with us and let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, what a beautiful day. We're just going to rejoice in your presence, Father God. For we know in your presence there is love, there is comfort, there is hope, there is truth. And so, Father God, right now, in the midst of this Sunday morning, we're just going to get still. And we're going to let our hearts and our minds release everything other than just receiving your pure love. We thank you, Father God, for the power of Holy Spirit. We thank you for Holy Spirit being our comforter and being our guide. And Holy Spirit, we welcome you into this service now. We give you the service. We bind every hindrance, be it video, audio, or any other hindrance that tries to come against the word this morning. We thank you, Father God, for Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for dying on the cross for us. We thank you that you saved us for our, from our sins. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you helped to, us to recognize those sins, those things that separate us from God. And we thank you, Father, that we can come to you in prayer and we can get strength to fight the battles that we have to go through. And we can enjoy the pleasures and the blessings that you have for us. Thank you, Father, for today. We welcome you in, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, this morning I'm going to read from uh, Sarah Young. And uh, these are words, Sarah Young is an amazing, um, I guess I would call her a minister of the gospel. And, um, but she puts in perspective God's scriptures straight from the word of God. But she puts in perspective what gives her, what he gives her to speak to us. And so I hope that you'll just take this into context and really let it sink. When things seem to, seem to be going all wrong, stay and affirm your trust in me. Calmly bring these matters to me and leave them in my capable hands. Then simply do the next thing. Stay in touch with me through thankful and trusting prayers. Resting in my sovereign control. Rejoice in me. Exalt in the God of your salvation. As you trust in me, I make your feet like the feet of deer. I enable you to walk and make progress upon the high places of trouble, suffering, or responsibility. And one of the scriptures comes from Job 13 and 15. And it says, Though he slay me, yea, I will trust him. Even so, I will defend my own ways before him. And then we have Psalms 18 and 33. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to stand on the heights. And we praise God for his word. And we thank him for being our help in time of trouble. And also our joy, because the joy of the Lord is where our strength comes from. So let's welcome in the Holy Spirit. Let's praise God. If you would stand and join the praise team. Glory to God. Let's just appreciate the Lord and show him that with some hand claps and some shouts this morning. Come on, you make some big noise with God.
just lift you high this morning. How glorious you are. How kind and gracious that you would come and be with us. That you love us. That you would send Jesus for us. Oh, we're grateful. We're grateful. We bless your holy name. And desire that every breath praises you today. Whether it's man or woman or boy or girl or even babies. That you know the word says that out of the mouth of babies. <laughs> so let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah.
but then we can just have this praise that goes up, and even though it might not sound like it to our ears, but to God, if, if, if somebody is over there saying, we bless your name, and somebody's over here saying, I praise you, God, and somebody's on the stage saying, Lord, we love you, somehow it blends together for his ears. Amen? Amen. So let's, let's don't worry about all these little mistakes that we make, because we always make some. But to God, as long as we're praising Him, we're making a joyful noise. Amen? Amen. Can you give Him another shout?
of God in them. They're not just something we just come up with. They have the Word of God. So they're based on the truth of God. So when there's something in the Scripture, it says you are here touching every heart. And that we worship Him. And He's healing every heart. So we claim that. I claim that for me. Not just for you, but I want your heart healed to the extent where nothing can come against you in such a way that it will deter you from what you're calling you. That's the thing. You're calling. You will be attacked. We already know that. You can't, you can't escape from attacks because you're living in a fallen earth. Amen? But you can escape the problem that comes with it. You can soar like an eagle, even in the midst of a storm. And I've said it before, but I'll say it again. That's what the eagles do. When there's a storm coming, they just rise up above it. And that's what you can do. If it wasn't so, we wouldn't have put it in the Scripture. So what are we going to believe? I choose to believe the Word. Amen? Give Him a shot this morning, and you might be thinking, say, I am healed. I will believe. Good morning again, Oasis family. So good to see everyone coming in the sanctuary. Awesome praise and worship again. And, um, you know, Patty, I was, as I'm fixing to bring a little quick tithing message, um, she just, she hit on something. And, you know, God's a healer. And it's not, you know, tithing is not just about money. I mean, that's, that's the physical part of it that you do. Your finances... You give 10% of it. That's the tithe. Tithe means 10. So that's what we're doing. We're giving 10% of our money. But we take into account the whole promises of God, which means healing. And healing is in his presence. How many times have you been so downtrodden because there was a bill due and you had no idea of where the money was coming from? But you're a tithe. There is healing and comfort in the fact that you can trust the Lord and go to the Lord with your need. And this is what he says. He said, since you bring, now see, there's, there's a stipulation here. Bring your tithes into the storehouse. Okay, that's, that's the first part. We as Christians, we understand that, okay? So when you bring your tithes into the storehouse, God says, test me and see if I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing so much you can't contain it. Well, if I've got a due bill and my bank account says I'm, you know, zero, and the bill says pay this amount, who am I going to trust as a Christian? Amen. Who am I going to trust as a tither? Did I put my money in the kingdom or did I put my money in the bank? Uh -huh. Now, in this world system, we put our money in the bank because, you know, the world has to, they, that's how we work. I mean, we're in human flesh. I know we all are spirit of God that love God and we know the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and sometimes we just move ourselves out of our body. I mean, literally, you know, to praise God. And we do that. We leave the human, you know, Aside, We have to do that. If we didn't, we'd just go to dust. I mean, we just, because the presence of the Lord is so mighty, you know, that, I mean, we just, we crumble. But God strengthens us, and he's our comforter in those times of trouble. And see, in the area of finances, we get into trouble. You know, things break down. We're living, like Patty said, we're living in a fallen world. That means your car is going to break down, your tire is going to wear out, your house is going to have a problem, the plumbing is going to quit. You know, there's going to be things. But I tell you, I got a, I've got a, um, a new friend of mine anyway, and this is what he says. These are opportunities for God to show out. We've got an opportunity to hear to see how God's going to solve this problem. Well, as a tither and doing the right thing before God, we have legal right to draw from heaven. We have legal right to call those things that be not as though they are. And God tells us, bring the tithe into the storehouses, Malachi 3 and 10. 
and see if I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing so much you can't contain it. As a Christian, that's our right. That's where we stand. That's where we, the people of Oasis, stand on, on tithing. We're not here to condemn you if you don't. We are here to love on you and let you know that the Lord loves you and it's between you and Him. Amen. It is a covenant made between you and Him. Amen. It is an honor of love between you and Him. But this is a storehouse. This is a storehouse. And we all come together so that the Lord has things in His house to give, give to one another. We do it for our physical families. That's a part of the world. We even do it for organizations that stand for things good because we want to do good because in our heart we want to do what's right before God and God is a good God and a giving God. So we're going to trust him today and we're going to take him at his promises and we're going to hold our tithes in our right hand doing the right thing before God and we're going to speak over our tithes and offerings. So if you will, speak after me. As I tithe and give offerings, I believe and I receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, discounts and dividends, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills decreased, bills paid off, blessings and increase. Blessings and increase. Blessings and increase. Now let's thank the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For meeting all my financial needs. For meeting all my financial needs. That I may now have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God. To give into the kingdom of God. And promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. And promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. And here are a few ways that you can give. We are oasisfamilychurch.net. And you can go to that website, and there you will find a donate button. It will give you all these ways to give. We do have paypal.me, that is a forward slash oasisfamilychurch. Text to give at 334-274-7885. You may use cash app, that is the dollar sign. And it is Oasis Family Church with no spaces. Or you can mail in those donations at Post Office Box 246. Smith Station, Alabama, 36877. And here in the sanctuary, we do have postage paid envelopes. So we really would love to see your face in the sanctuary. We enjoy having, being able to touch one another and lift up one another. And it's just, it's awesome to have that uh, fellowship. Yes. And so we, we just um, welcome you to come and join us. All right, we've come to that time now. We're going to get a good word. So we welcome up our pastors. Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. And praise and worship was wonderful. So thankful for our praise team. Let's give them a hand. We love God and we are very thankful to have our, our anointed praise team. Praise God. And uh, we just want to welcome each and every one that are here in the sanctuary today. And those that are watching by Facebook or whatever form of media you're watching us by today. And we just pray that this uh, service and this message blesses you today and ministers to you and answers questions that you have. Uh -huh. And uh, that you know that God is on your side. He is with you and he will never leave you and never forsake you. Amen. He's working on your behalf right Amen. at this time. Amen. 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 Praise God. And so... Before I turn over to Pastor, I want to just speak a word of blessing. And this is uh, basically who you are in Christ Jesus. So I, is my mic off? No. It's just trying to tell me something. Just <laughs> move make some declarations over who you are in Christ Jesus. So I declare in the name of Jesus that you are a new creature 
predestined for greatness. You are a child of God, fully accepted by God. God's love for you never runs out. I declare abundance is God's will for you, and you won't settle for less. The Holy Spirit is your helper. You are never alone. You have the peace of God. You are blessed with all spiritual blessings. Things are happening for your good. You are reigning in life by Christ Jesus. You are not looking at the things that are seen, but at the things that are not seen. You are walking by faith and not by sight. You cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. You are a partaker of God's divine nature. You are uh, prosperous and in good health because your soul prospers. You are complete in Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Give him a hand. Amen. 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 And I think on, on today we're just going to say the, uh, the blessing. Okay. And uh, Father, we just plead the blood of Jesus over your word today. And Father, I just thank you that you help us to flow. Amen. Help us to flow the way you want us to flow. Help us to flow with the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit to help us. And we believe we receive the help of the Holy Spirit this day to flow and to minister the way that you want us to minister this yes. day. And we thank you that needs will be opened and met yes. this day. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ask if you will to get your Bibles and go to Philemon. Starts like Philippians. <laughs> Not used to saying Philemon. Philemon 1 and 6. We're going to dig down deep in this scripture. That, <clears throat> this is in the King James. That the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Now, sometimes in life, we let people tag us. We allow their wrong words to have place in our life. And it doesn't matter, really, what other people think of us. Mm -hmm. Maybe their words describe who we used to be. Mm -hmm. Maybe their words describe mistakes that we have made in the past. Mm -hmm. And they're remembering those mistakes when they see us. But that's not who we are. Right. Let God's word be true and every man a liar. Yes. That's yes. Romans 3 and 4. Yes. God is telling the truth on us. The truth is we are the head and not the tail. Yes. We're above only and not beneath. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. We are overcomers. We're more than conquerors. In Deuteronomy 28 and 13, I'm going to give you that scripture. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If thou shalt hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, to observe and to do them. Now, so many times we worry about what other people think. But 2 Corinthians 5 and 21 says, God has made him to be no sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God in him. Now I want to read that in the Passion Translation. For God made the only one who did not sin to become sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God through our union with him. And that's what I want you to really focus on, through our union with him. Through our union with him, we are the righteousness of God in Christ. That's who we are. Now, you might have been a drug addict yesterday, but that's not who you are today. Amen. God calls you free. Amen. You, you might have made plenty of mistakes in your past, but those mistakes have been forgiven. They're under the blood of Jesus, and God considers Amen. you the righteousness of God in Christ. It's the same righteousness that's imparted to Christ that's imparted to us. Isaiah 43, 18, and 19, God says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing, and now it shall spring forth. God says, Forget who you were. Let me tell you who you are. You are not defined by the mistakes of your past. You are not who others say you are. God says, I say who you are. You can do what I say you can do. You can have what I say you can have. God says, I've called you out of darkness into my marvelous light. 
God says you are healed. God says you are forgiven. God says you are chosen. God says you are made in my image. You are made in my likeness. God says I have equipped you. I have anointed you. I have lifted you. You are a peculiar treasure unto me. God says I have raised you up. I have not rejected you. Man may have rejected you. People may have rejected you. Your family may have rejected you. But I have not rejected you. That's what the Lord is saying. I have not rejected you. You are my child. You belong to me. You are my child. You belong to me. Isaiah 43, 1 and 2. I, I felt this morning, I had to adjust this and bring this out. I don't know if this is a journey for someone special or for, for all of us. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. He knows our name. He knows every one of our names. He had us named by our parents. I'm telling you, we were named by God. God knows our name. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I've called you by your name. You're mine. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Amen. But the enemy has tried to put tags on us. Yes. He's had to, people cross our path and be used by the enemy. Maybe they're, they're good, well-meaning people sometimes. But they're used by the enemy in their words. And they put tags on us. You're rejected. You're worthless. Uh, you're, not, you're not any good. You'll never amount to anything. But God says, my tag is, you are accepted in the beloved. That's who you are. You are mine. That's who you are. And by acknowledging that first scripture, by acknowledging who we are in Christ and what belongs to us in Christ, that inferiorities fall off of our life. All of us have things that we face, insecurities and inferiorities that try to, to, to get down in the, the inside of us. And I know it kept coming out about this morning about healing. Healing, healing. And that's what the Spirit was saying. There's a spiritual healing. There's deep spiritual healing going to happen this morning on the inside of everyone that will that'll receive it. There's a, a deep work of healing that the Holy Spirit is doing in our midst today. That same scripture, Philemon 1 and 6, this is in the Good News Translation. My prayer is that our fellowship with you as believers will bring about a deeper understanding of every blessing which we have in our life in union with Christ. Mm -hmm. Now in the Darby translation, I really like this. In such short that the participation in thy faith should become, I want y'all to, to remember this word, operative, 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 in the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in us toward Christ Jesus. We should be acknowledging every good thing that is in us in Christ. The word says, that word tells us, it becomes operative when we acknowledge it. It starts operating in our lives when we acknowledge it. Yes. Favor becomes operative in our lives. It starts working in our lives when we acknowledge it. Healing becomes operative. It starts operating in our lives when we acknowledge that I'm the healed. Prosperity becomes operative in our lives when we acknowledge it. Wisdom becomes operative in our lives when we acknowledge it. Yeah. Amen. Psalms 42, 6 in the message says, When my soul is in the dumps, I rehearse everything I know of you. That's what we should be doing. Yeah. We should be rehearsing everything that he said about us. Yeah. You know, we all go through times where we get down in the dumps. You know, you may say, well, I've never been there. You're a lying dog. That's what you are. Yeah. And, and we need to get that lying spirit cast out of you. Amen. 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 Because everybody goes through times when they're, they're not on the mountain the way they would like to be. Amen? That's all of us. And the devil is the father of lies. And he has somebody coming across our path to tag us on those days. Failure. Never amount to anything. Worthless. No good. And maybe it was, it was your father that, that said things about you in your childhood that affected you. Maybe it was your mother. Maybe it was your teacher. Maybe it was your friend or relative. But it was a lie, and it came from the pit of hell. Amen. The Good News Bible in Psalms 27 and 10 says, My father and my mother may abandon me, but the Lord will take care of me. Amen. Isn't that good? Amen. Contemporary English says, Even if my father and mother desert me, you will take care of me. Amen. Before the truth can set us free, we need to recognize which lie 
is holding us hostage. Amen. That came off Facebook, and the lady's name is Carrie McLean. I copied it straight off of Facebook. I just thought that was so good. good. <clears throat> See, the message in chapter 38, it says, I'm ready to tell someone my story of failure. And that's what we do a lot of times. We tell stories of failure. This happened to me, and this happened to me, and this is the reason I'm like this, and this is the reason I can't achieve this, because we have stories of failure. We all have stories of failure. But God said that was a chapter. That wasn't the whole book. Hallelujah. Turn the page on that chapter. Hallelujah. Read the next chapter. Yes. The title of the next chapter is How God Restored Me. Yeah. The chapter after that says How God Blessed Me. Yeah. The next chapter after that, How God Used Me. Yeah. The rest of your book is the best of your book. Yes. Keep reading. Keep going forward. Yes. You're an overcomer. That's what the Lord has yes. tagged you. You're the head, not the tail. That's what you're tagged. You're above only and not beneath. That's the tag that's on you. Yes. Do you see yourself the way God sees you? What lies are you believing about yourself, about your spouse, about other people? Evil spirits, lying spirits have planted seeds in our lives uh -huh. through people being used by the enemy. A lot of people believe, well, I'm, I'm not very smart. I'm not very intelligent. But you are intelligent. You're created in the image of God. Yeah. You're intelligent. You have the wisdom of God in you. You have the mind of Christ. But there's a seed that's been planted. I know I read about a guy that um, was told that he was not, not very intelligent. Uh -huh. And uh, so he didn't. He had a, a, just a, the basic, basic, basic of a job because they said he, he just didn't have the intelligence to do anything above that. And he's working at this job, and for some reason, they, they had to do an IQ test or something in order for him to, to keep the job. Something I, I don't remember exactly, but I remember he did it, and he was like in the top, top, top of people. He wasn't like ignorant the way they've been telling him all these years. He was like, he was like a super genius. And they, they let him know the results of this thing. This is a true story. And they let him know the results of this thing. And before you know it, when he realized he got the image of, wait, I'm not, I've been told I'm stupid all my life. I'm not stupid. I'm smarter than all these stupid people. I'm, I'm smart. That's what I am. I'm highly intelligent. He quit that nothing job. He got him a better job. He started his own business. I mean, it was just one thing after another, one success after another. It changed the image. God's word changes the image. When we start operating with the word of God in our heart and in our mouth, I'm telling you, it changes the image. It changes the wounds from the past. The things that people have said, it uproots those things and heals those things deep inside of us. Yes, yes. <clears throat> Jesus is longing to heal us where we hurt the most. We are accepted in the beloved. We are highly favored. I say again, what lies are we believing about ourselves, about others, about God? Our biggest hindrance to our walk with God is the lies that we believe. And it's the people, the people who put tags on us. That's not who we are. I'm who God says I am. Not who others say I am. Some of our friends have too much of an influence on our lives. Oh, let me go a step further. Some of your friends need the scissors. Oh, that was good. You almost this missed it. Some of your friends need the scissors. You're going to have to cut them off. You say, well, I ain't cutting them off. They've been my friend for years. And they've been holding you back because they've got a big mouth. And they've been saying negative things. And they've been talking back bad about you behind your back. They've been saying bad things about you. And you can't seem to rise up above anything because you start to believe the lies that are coming through their mouths. Sometimes you just got to cut them loose. Cut them loose. You love them, you love them from a great distance. Great distance. I know a lot of people tell me, well, I just thought, I, I believe you've got to love them up close. That's a lie. That's a lie. Mm -hmm. And I can show it to you in the Word of God. Uh, sometimes you gotta, you got to step back. Sometimes you got to step way back. Way back out of hearing range. Thank you very much. That's good. Because then you'll get the revelation of who God says you are. It'll change you. It'll edify you. And you may say, well, I, I just, uh, I don't agree with the way you, you do this or you do that. 
I gotta be honest with you, I'm 62 years old and I don't care anymore. I don't care whether you like it or you don't like it. I prayed about it. Did you pray about it? You're gonna tell me I did it wrong? You better have prayed about it before you get in my place with it. Because I might straighten you out. You might not like it. You might say, that pastor's rude. That's what he is. He's rude. No, I'm gonna be straightforward. That's what I'm gonna be. And you can call it what you want to call it, but I'm gonna call it I heard from God, did you? That's what I'm gonna call it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to please God because I'm going to stand before Him. Yes. His opinion matters more than anybody else's opinion in our lives. Uh -huh. yeah. mm. Those who challenge you will go down in defeat. But I promise you, no weapon meant to hurt you will succeed. And you will refute every accusing word spoken against you. The, this promise is the inheritance of Yahweh's servants. Vindication is from me. Saith Yahweh. Stop focusing on all the things you don't like about yourself. Stop focusing on the things. Start focusing on the things God says about you. Okay. I know. I want to pray a prayer. I know I'm going to say this to remind myself today. We're opening for new members today. And we also have some birthdays in the house. Though. We've got to remember that because we're going to sing birthdays. Stuff today, but um, I want to pray a prayer for all of us before Pastor Sharon comes. In the name of Jesus, we cancel the lies of the enemy, yes. the deep-rooted lies, the obvious lies to other people and to and to us. But we still believe some of those lies. We cancel those lies. We cancel the effects of those lies. We plead the blood of Jesus, and we call for spiritual healing. In deep wounds today. In deep places that have been wounded. We call for spiritual healing today. We break the yokes of the lies of the enemy. And we declare freedom today. Nothing missing, nothing broken. We declare wholeness. We, we declare that the eyes of our understanding are enlightened according to the hope of your calling. We see things in a new light today. We see things the way your word says. Not the way others see it for us. And not the way we have been locked into seeing it wrongly. But we see what you see, Father God. The eyes of our understanding have been enlightened. According to the hope of your calling. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I love the truth of God's word. Yes. You will know the truth, but the truth will make you free. Praise God. Awesome, awesome word. Continuing on with stand strong in who God says you are. You know, in Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5, and this is amplified, it says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Now, isn't that awesome? I mean, I mean we can't really grasp, you know, how much God knows us. He created us. He made us. He knew us before we were even formed in our mother's womb. So, you know, God is the one who gave us life. He is the one that has put his breath of life in us. And as the saying goes, you know, God don't make junk. Amen. Have you ever heard that before? That might be too old for some of you younger people. But that used to be a saying, believe me. But, you know, um, God called you a masterpiece. He called you, you know, he said that you were his prized possession. You are, you know, you're his child. You just think about how much you love your children. You know, that doesn't even compare to the love that God has for us. Amen? Amen. And so, you know, God has given you everything that you need to fulfill his purposes and his plan and his call for your life. Amen? Amen. You know, the enemy, of course, is trying to stop us. He's trying to forget uh, to uh, tell us who we aren't. Amen? But, you know, we're not doing anything on our own. Not in us. We're doing it in, uh, in God. It's all in God that we do anything. But, you know, do you uh, do, uh, do yourself a favor? You know, just don't try to compare yourself. You look at other people and say, oh, if I could just do that. Oh, if I just look like that. Oh, if I just had that. We're just constantly comparing ourselves. Amen? But, you know, it takes all of us in our uniqueness to make a whole, doesn't it? Amen? We're all the body of Christ. We're all children of God. And, you know, we've been picking on the praise team lately, but it's really not picking on the praise team. But I was just wanting to thinking about the example, you know, 
Patty is just an awesome uh, keyboardist. Yes, she yes, plays yes, beautiful yes, on the yes, keyboard. Yes, we yes, all need that, don't yes, we? Amen. Yes, yes, and then yes, Bean, he plays the bass, yes, you know. Yes, and he is a great bass player. Yes, but you know, uh, Bean could be looking at Patty and saying, oh, I wish I could play the way Patty does. And Patty might look at Bean and say, I wish I could play the bass like Bean does. And you know, then, uh, then uh, somebody else might look at Derek and think, well, I wish I could play the guitar like, like Derek does. And then somebody's looking at um, Juan and saying, I wish I could play the, the drums like Juan does. And then, you know, Debbie's playing the flute. You might say, I wish I could play the flute like Debbie does. You know, God has made you uniquely to be who you are. And we all need each other. It takes all of us in our uniqueness. Amen. Because that's, God has made you an individual. He has not made you a clone. He has created you to be you. Amen. And so, you know, but just know that the enemy is just putting all these thoughts. You know, I'm not as good as so-and-so. I can't do things like so-and-so. You know, I'm not good enough on all these things. Know that God has made you uniquely. You have qualities. God has put qualities in you, amen, that God uh, wants for your personality, for your uh, makeup, for everything about you. That, and then he's put qualities in the other person. So we all have qualities that God has put in us to make us uniquely us, amen. And so, you know, don't let other people tell you who you aren't. Don't you let people tell you you're not good enough. Uh -huh. Don't you let people tell you you're not smart enough. Yes. Don't you let people tell you you're not pretty enough or guys handsome enough. Amen? Amen. Amen. Don't compare yourself with other people. We are uniquely made by God. He want, He made you just exactly the way you are. Uh -huh. and just exactly the way that He wanted you to be. Uh -huh. you know, Sometimes we have a distorted view of ourselves. It is not the God view. It is a distorted view because of what people have said. Amen. So, you know, but that's because you've been looking in the wrong mirror. You've been looking and you've been uh, looking in the, the uh, people mirror of what people have said. So we need to look in the mirror that God has made. Amen. Who God says we are. Amen. God has made you on purpose to be just like you are. You're good enough because God made you you. Amen. Uh -huh. He you. made yeah. you and not people. You know, you need to look into the mirror of God's word. Uh -huh. You know, the more God's word we get on the inside of us, the more that we know who God has created uh -huh. us to be. Amen. Uh -huh. The more that we will be, we will be able to walk out what God has planned and purpose for our lives. Yes. Praise God. Amen. God said you were created in his image. Yes. You were fearfully and wonderfully made by God. Amen. You are just a happenstance. You didn't just happen. Right. God created you. Amen. That's right. You were wonderfully made, fearfully made. He very carefully created you to be just who you are. So, you know, you are God's masterpiece today. You are his masterpiece. You are uniquely created. You are what God says you are. You are chosen of him, by him. Amen. Hallelujah. You are create. You are courageous. You are strong. That's what the word yes. of God says. Yes. You are more than a comfort. Yes. You are valuable. You are victorious. Yes. You are triumphant. That's who you are today. That's what God says you are. So, you know, we've got to change the image that uh, of, of ourselves through the word of God, through what God's word says that we are today. God sees you differently than you see yourself. Uh -huh. You know, we look in the mirror and we see all our flaws. You know, we put too much in, more emphasis on the outside appearance yeah. than we do on the spiritual appearance, amen, amen. on our amen. spiritual well-being. God sees you differently than you see yourself. Yeah. You know, the Bible tells us uh, in the Word of God and Judges about Gideon. You know, the Midianites came to... Uh, to fight against the Israelites. And here Gideon was. He was so afraid of the Midianites that he ran and hid in the winepress. 
So he's hiding, he's trembling, he's afraid of these uh, Midianites. And all of a sudden, an angel appears to him, and uh, he says, uh, uh, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Here he is, hiding in the wine press, terrified, trembling, probably praying, God, save me. God, send somebody to take out the Midianites so I won't get killed, you know. <laughs> you know how you do. Well, here he is. You know, he's hiding, he's worried, and he's scared, and he's trembling. So God, the angel, the Lord says, go in the might and strength that I have given you and save Israel. God has put things on the inside of you. Amen. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now, we're looking in that wrong mirror, you know. Uh -huh. um, I'm, I'm fearful. Uh, I'm not courageous. We're, we're looking at all the things that we think we're not. Uh -huh. And then we forget that we got somebody bigger yes. on the inside of us. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Praise God. And so he, you know. He's telling, um, he said, go in the strength and might that I have given you and save Israel from the Midianites. Now, you know, Gideon's not feeling like a mighty warrior. He's feeling like, God, do you know what you're doing? You know, God, don't you know that I'm, I'm, I'm hiding from the enemy? And God's saying, you go out and you take the Midianites out. You destroy the Midianites. And so, um... He didn't uh, see himself that way, but God saw him. God saw him in a different way. God sees you in a different way than you see yourself. And you know what? The, the thing that um, we have to remember is that we're not going in ourselves. That's right. We're not going in uh, in our flesh, but we're going in the name of the Lord. Amen. Going in the name of the Lord, and so that's what God told Gideon to do. So, you know, God has put things on the inside of you that you don't even realize is there. You know, we walk by faith and faith and not by sight. Amen? Amen. And that's why, because we have looked so much on who we perceive ourselves to be. Uh -huh. Amen? So we've got to get that word of God. We've got to change our image, amen, with the word of God. So, you know, when you see yourself as the word of God says you are, you're able to do things that you never, ever thought possible. You know, uh, it's amazing when you look back uh, after you've gone through something and you look, you look back and say, you know, God, how did you make this happen? How was I able to do this? How was I able to, to conquer that situation? But, you know, it's through him. It's through the Lord. And, you know, there's a warrior inside of us, whether we feel like there is or not. There is a warrior there, amen? amen. And, you know, prayer is a mighty force. It's a yes, mighty yes, weapon. It is. Yes, it and, you know, when you go to, to battle in prayer, that is being a warrior. Uh -huh. You're doing things in the spirit realm that you can't, you can't even imagine that you're doing. Uh -huh. That's why the enemy fights us so much to get us not to pray. Amen. You know, he just makes us too busy. I don't have time right now. You know, we're just on that highway going as fast as we can go. We've got to make time for prayer. Time is short, amen. So we have to, whatever God's going to do in the spirit, we've got to be that, that uh, intercessor for him and for the other people, amen. And so we have a, a quick work that we've got to do. So that word is on the inside of you. And, you know, God has put things on the inside of you that you don't even realize yet. But we're going to tap into those things, aren't we? Amen. We're going to tap into the things that God has put on, on the inside of us. Amen. And so we all know about uh, the story about David. David was just a little shepherd boy. Amen? Amen. And, you know, he, he just, you know, he, he watched the sheep. That was what he did. But he was chosen by God. You might just be so and so. You might go, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just little on me. But you are chosen by God. That doesn't make you little of you, amen? That makes you a whole lot more. So God had chosen him to be king of Israel. Who would think little shepherd boy out there watching the sheep is called and chosen of God, anointed by God 
to be king. But you know, the Lord, he sent, uh, he talked to, told Samuel, he uh, sent Samuel to Bethlehem to the house of Jesse, the, and the Lord said, I have chosen one of Jesse's sons. Now Jesse had eight sons. And so Samuel goes and he finds Jesse in, in Bethlehem, tells him that God has chosen one of his sons to be king of Israel. So Jesse, he brings seven of his sons before Samuel, and he thought for sure that his oldest son would be the chosen one, the anointed one, because he was tall, he was very large, he was a muscular uh, young man, and so he thought for sure he's the one, the chosen one. Here we go, looking at the outside again. Uh -huh. yes. But God says, no, he's not the one. He said, I don't look on the outward appearance. I look on the heart. Uh -huh. Amen. God knows what's in a heart. Uh -huh. Amen. Uh -huh. He knows. And so he saw something in David that his the father didn't see, that his brothers didn't see. But anyway, he went, Je uh, Jesse uh, put all his sons up before Samuel. Each one, uh, the Lord spoke to Samuel and said, that's not the one. That's not my chosen one. Amen. So, you know, don't look on that outward appearance. All these other sons look like they had to be the one. But he says, no. God says, no, I look on the heart. So Jesse brings them all uh, in front of Samuel. Samuel. God says, none of them. None of these are the chosen one. So he asks um, Jesse, he says, do you have any more sons? And uh, he says, well, I've got one more. But he's out uh, tending to the sheep. And so... Um, Samuel says, bring, bring him to me. So he brings David in, brings him before Samuel, and the Lord spoke to him. He says, this is my chosen one. This is who I am uh, appointing to be king over Israel. Amen? And so when David came, you know, and, and everybody was like shocked because here David is. You know, they said he had beautiful eyes and that he, had, uh, he was a handsome uh, young boy. And, you know, that's what we do. We think it's got to be the most handsome. You know, that's who, who's got to be called. But, you know, that, that tells us, you know, that God has a calling for each and every one of us. Doesn't matter what the outside appearance is. Doesn't matter what your life has been, gone, what you've gone through in your life, in your past. Amen. Uh, God calls because he sees the heart. Yes. He chooses because he sees the heart. And so David was anointed and was king, made king over Israel. Amen. 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 So we can't look at the outward appearance. God, thank God he looks on the heart. Huh? Amen. Thank God. So, um, you know, there may be things that God has put on the inside of you. And maybe other people don't see these things. Maybe they're like, you know, they can never be used to God. They can never, you know, people even have had people tell them, you, will, you won't amount to anything. Well, you don't know what God's got planned for that person. You know, we can't say that about anybody because, you know, it's usually the, the, the last that is first. Amen. And the first that's the last. And it just happens that way because of the heart. Because people who say that, you know, they're, they're walking in, uh, looking at the outward appearance. So... David was, he was a, a brave young man. You know, here he is out in the field tending to the sheep. Uh, a lion comes up to try to get the sheep, and David uh, kills the lion. You know, can you imagine? He kills him with his bare hand. Yeah. Now, God was with David, wasn't he? Yeah. He had appointed him. He had anointed him, even while he was tending the sheep. And then another occasion, a bear tries to get the sheep. David kills the bear with his bare hand. Uh -huh. Amen. And so God knew what was in David's heart. He said he's brave. Yes. He's courageous. Hallelujah. He is the material for kingship. Hallelujah. You know, he's the one that I choose Hallelujah. to be king. Hallelujah. Amen. So he's looking. Yes. He's saying, amen. Oh, well, they're brave. Uh -huh. they're, they're courageous. Now, I'm not saying... Uh, that uh, if a bear came at me <laughs> with my bare hands, just tear that bear up. <laughs> it happened to God, believe me. 
Amen. I wouldn't make doors in the trees. Or no. But anyway, he saw God saw him in a different light than his father and his sons and his brothers saw him. And then, you know, we know that um, David was a giant killer. He, he killed, you know, Goliath with a slingshot and one stone. Amen. So God saw that David was. Uh, key material. Amen. Amen. These are things that God sees in you. Hallelujah. Amen. He sees, Hallelujah. He has put things on the inside of you, and He sees who you are in Him. He sees that. Amen. You are courageous today. You are victorious today. You are triumphant today. Amen. Yes. So you have to stop looking in, that, in the wrong mirror. And you've got to start looking into the mirror of, the God, of God's Word to see what God says who you are, what God says you can have, and what God says you can do. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Give him a hand. Clap of praise. Glory to God. Glory to God. Pastor, we come up at this time. As Pastor was saying, we're opening up today for new members. Praise God. And so we know that uh, Hilton is wanting to join the church this morning. So Hilton, if you'll make your way up here. Amen. We welcome you this morning.